Jameis gets screwed on another list. That's uh, that says uh, that's the video for today. Just title it that. That's Tom Lang, I'm Jeff Cameron. There's Jameis Winston. He's not in the top ten according to this college football QBs since 2000 on three ESPN uh, tweet, which suggests that uh, what is number one? Baker Mayfield is number one, which is comical on a lot of levels. But I would submit to you, Tom, where we start with this is you're not comparing apples to apples. This is, you don't have um, this list with a define your terms aspect attached to it. If you're, and I'm going to give you an example of what I mean by this, okay? So if you go back and look at this, and, and I did, and I'm sorry, I got to, I know there's a glare, guys, but I got to put my glasses on. I'm going blind these days. <laughs> I wanted to go and look and see like how it would be that you came up with Baker Mayfield number one, because Tom, you and I were talking off there. Tell the people what you said, because I, I that's what I do. That's where my brain goes. Yeah. With what you suggested to me. Go ahead. If I look at this list, I laugh, first of all. And secondly, uh, I'm looking at a list of ranking top 10 quarterbacks since the turn of the millennium based upon if I'm playing for a national title, not a Super Bowl, not, you know, who could rack up the most yards in, in October. I'm playing for a national title at the collegiate level. Who am I turning to and in what order am I turning to that quarterback? Okay. So if you do it that way, I'm going to, I don't want to put words in your mouth or make a selection for you, but my guess is that you're going to vote on Cam Newton ahead of Baker Mayfield, right? Uh, yes. That's okay. True. We don't have to expound on the reasons why I think it's self-evident. You're going to take Cam Newton over ba Baker Mayfield. Might I submit to you that Cam Newton has a grand total of 2,908 passing yards and 30 touchdowns in his career at Auburn? Yep. You would say, okay, well, Tom, Baker Mayfield had 14,607 yards, completed nearly 70% of his passes, and threw 131 touchdown passes in addition to rushing for over 1,000 yards. Those don't seem like like statistics at all. One guy must be outlandishly better than the other. Yeah, See right. My point? And, and right. Barry one Bonds guy starts for four years in the college game. One guy starts for one. One guy starts for two years in a slow-paced offense and still puts up astronomical. We're not comparing like numbers here. No, and Fernando Tatis hit 40 home runs, and Barry Bonds hit more home runs than Henry Aaron and so forth. You know, right. that's what the Big 12 is, and we all know that. I'm just thinking, you know, this is kind of my sweet spot of my era because I, I went to college uh, right when Vince Young was running in a touchdown against USC in the national title game. That's my first year Great in game. college. A classic game. All-timer. And he's somebody I would take over Baker Mayfield. Tim Tebow is somebody I would take over Baker Mayfield. Joe Burrow, Deshaun Watson, not Kyler Murray, not Lamar Jackson, not Marcus Mariota or RG3, but I would certainly would take Jameis Winston over a lot of these jokers on this list. Sure. Because of the variety of what he can do in the collegiate game, it's not like he was immobile either. So no. This is a player who was he as mobile as Marcus Mariota or, or Murray or Lamar? Hell no. No, of course not. But he was mobile enough. He thought through the game the right way. And he was a guy who set records in college football with a snail's pace of an offense. Well, and to your point, Tom, and this is what, again, I, I was trying to make the point that can we define our terms before we throw a list out there like this? Can we tell people this is about both the career, the accomplishments, the talent around the player, the amount of yards, the amount of touchdowns? Because, again, I'd submit to you, Jameis Winston threw for nearly 8,000 yards in his career his career consists of 2013 and 2014. He completed 66% of his passes for 65 touchdowns. He did have seven rushing TDs. Obviously, if you think about what he did, we won our first national title in 14 years. As a redshirt freshman, he does that. He won the Heisman going away. It was one of the most lopsided votes of all time, more than 1,500 points ahead of the next guy. Won the first 27 games of his career. Never lost in the regular season. We could go on and on, back-to-back -back conference tie, over and over. We can go through all these numbers. 
But if I want to make a case against him, I'll just go find a guy that started for another prolific offense, but he started for three or four years and also won a national title in Heisman because then I'm going to have the yardage advantage. Right. And I could just do that all day long. I'll be like, well, your guy threw for 7,000 yards. My guy threw for 18,000 yards. Well, yeah, your guy started for four freaking years. Well, I mean, this, this is dumb. That's why Baker Mayfield has the ultimate trump card, right? Because he won so many national titles. This is what I, I, I don't get. <laughs> you know, there's a guy. I'm looking down this list. I see four dudes, five dudes who never won a national title. And there's right. one of them that's at number one. The rest of them aren't in the top five. So what gives there? If you're going to have Baker Mayfield on the list, I mean, let's just put it this way. If you're going to put him at, on the list at number one, I am stunned that Johnny Manziel isn't on this list. Because okay. I thought Johnny Manziel actually, in, in regards to week-to-week -week collegiate football doing crazy things, yes, Mike Evans is a humongous part of it, but Johnny Manziel – was akin to quite a few names on this list. He he beat Alabama. They did win the Alamo Bowl, and they haven't done anything since. That's a program that doesn't do anything, but Johnny did with them. I would make that case, and I thought Johnny Manziel was one of the most overrated quarterbacks <laughs> coming into an NFL draft I'd ever seen. Right Now, it's not about the NFL, and if it is just about college, you can make a very compelling case for people like Johnny Manziel or one of your favorite players of all time. Colt McCoy. I'll make a yeah. Tom. Yeah. Colt McCoy completed 70% of his passes through for over 13,000 yards, 112 touchdowns. He rushed for over 1500 yards, had 20 rushing TDs. Now, if we're just going statistically, that might be a better career than hey, anybody on that list. I mean, it's minute. insane. Wait a minute. Where the hell's Graham Harrell? Isn't Graham Harrell going to be on this list? Graham right. Harrell set all the records. Where's Timmy Chang? Where the right. hell is Timmy Chang? That's what I want to know. Yeah. So look. To your point about Johnny Manziel, though, and I think this is an interesting one. They did not win the national title, obviously, and he does get immense credit for his ass cheeks hitting that old woman in the face against Duke. <laughs> it's one of the great moments in bowl history. Um, that but is that is the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl in it, one, one it, play. <laughs> it's a great, it's an incredible moment. But I want to do this so people understand what we're talking about when we're juggling stats and making our arguments. Yes, I would take Jameis Winston over any of these guys. But again, if you if you said, Jeff, you got to take somebody outside of this top 10 and and like Jameis is and make a case for him. Well, okay, I can make a really compelling case for the aforementioned Johnny Menzel threw for over 7,800 yards, completed 70% of his passes. Uh, he had 63 touchdowns. He rushed for over 2,100 yards and had 30 rushing touchdowns to boot. I mean, his numbers are astronomical. Yeah. I mean, no, they I actually kind of trump almost anybody's on this list in a weird way. No, I think what ESPN's trying to do is leave the two biggest clicks off the list because, remember, Manziel and Winston were the two – I mean, I mean – probably in the last 15, 20 years. Hated by a lot of people, yeah. But in college sports, who generates more clicks than those guys when they were in college? I don't yeah. think anybody did, and for not great reasons in some cases. But but even before Jameis got in trouble, the Manziel disease article was written, and it was the top thing on ESPN. Yeah. I, you know, if I get Johnny Manziel disease, hit me with that microphone or whatever he said. But I think you know the better way to look at the list is to say, who is Teflon? must be a part of the top 10 uh, from this era of the last 23 years. And I think there's no doubt, and I'm not going in the order that they're listing, because if I'm trying to win a football game and a national title, I'm turning to Joe Burrow before I'm turning to Tim Tebow. I'm probably turning to Joe Burrow that one season. That yeah. one season. I may be turning to Joe Burrow before I turn to anybody else. I it, mean, it, I, never, I never thought I'd say that, but man – uh, just to remind everybody uh, of Joe Burrow's prowess and it's uh, significant, Joe Burrow <laughs> threw for, in that singular season, uh, he had a 69% completion rate, 78 touchdowns combined two years. You can't count the – what they do is they put them – I guess you would stand him up next to Cam Newton's 2010 season. Right. That, that's what you would do. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, imagine if Jameis played a full game for 12 right. games during the right. regular season, the numbers that he would have put up. He already threw for 40 touchdowns. They went at a snail's pace, and he was his helmet was on the bench by the third quarter. Most Correct. Every yeah. And Burrow, real quick to finish my point, 5,671 yards, 60 touchdowns, and six interceptions. <laughs> touchdowns, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but, like, look, 
no disrespect, and and this is weird to say on a Florida State channel. No disrespect to Tim Tebow. Like he he belongs in. Oh, the he's an all time great college player. It's the Teflon category. It's the Teflon category. But if he doesn't have Percy Harvin, and if he doesn't have Aaron Hernandez, the murderer, and if he doesn't have all these other weapons, I think he's more in that Lamar Jackson, Marcus Mariota range than he is Teflon. But just for the argument's sake, that was a guy who on fourth and three, he was still oh, yeah. get it. Yeah. But I think Cam Newton has to be higher than Tebow because Cam could throw the ball more consistently. Vince Young is probably higher than both of them because of what he did that season, I think. He's nuts. But when you're talking about can win with any situation of these quarterbacks, can win in any yeah, it's Jameis. It's Joe Burrow and Jameis in no particular order. And I think Deshaun Watson might enter that conversation pretty early as well. Incredible college player uh, and, and has been a great NFL player prior to really falling in love with a massage. Right. I would tell you that um, it's easy to anger people with lists like this. Do not waste your time getting angry with lists like this. I think we all know Jameis Winston belongs on this list. It's really, in many ways, hard to argue otherwise. I think you kind of have to bend over backwards to exclude Jameis Winston on this RG3? list. Three, my yeah, I mean, RG three. Uh, Lamar Jackson lost more games. In one year, then Jameis, I mean, it would have taken Jameis how many years to lose five or six football games? Well, we'll do this thing, and in fairness to RG3 and Lamar Jackson, and I'm not taking anything away from Jameis Winston, but when all 22 starters make it to the league, you've got a lot of talent around you, more than he had at Baylor, let's say. So, you know, I mean, this is this is what you do. This is how you go back and forth. This is when we're at the bar having a beer going, who would you take? And then you pick a guy that I wouldn't pick. And I say to you, well, let me tell you something, buddy, my guy, blah, 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 blah. and then you counter it with, well, maybe, but your guy lost nine games. He's a bum. And then I tell you that your guy had more talent than has ever been uh, assembled before. And he better go undefeated. And then we can do this all day. And we order another beer. Just it's what it is. So, okay. If you had to pick three, do it that way. It's not one, but if you had to pick three from 2000, and and on and so you could go off the list for James any Robinson. three quarterbacks any three these are your three guys that you would ride with in order to win the bcs title game the college football playoff national championship game i'm putting this guy in my lineup how would you how you you could order him if you want or you could say in no particular order but how well i don't know how you couldn't take 2010 cam newton it's arguably the greatest season of all time he was a freak he ran for over 1,500 yards. What the hell are you going to do with that and threw for almost 3,000? What, what are you going to do with that? Well, if you're Gary Danielson, you're going to loosen your belt buckle. That's well, no, doing. because he's not Tim Tebow. So what are you going to do? Oh, no, he was for Cam as well. He's like, oh, another yeah. one. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah, I think I've got to take uh, Cam Newton on this list. Well, maybe I don't even care if he's on the list. I'd take Cam Newton. He is on the list. I, that singular season, do I get them at their very best? Because if you're going to yeah. tell me I get Joe Burrow in that singular year where he throws 60 touchdowns and six interceptions, it, it's hard not to take Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. And then I think I'd take in Jameis Winston because we watched a guy as a redshirt freshman dominate games with his brain. This is what's not talked about. This is the problem. Jameis Winston we can get into debate after debate after debate about maturity levels and on and off the field and anything you want. But I am telling you that Jameis Winston, as described by another football savant, Jimbo Fisher, is one of the brightest football minds the college level has ever seen. And his ability to understand what defenses were attempting to do pre-snap and to check us into right plays does not get talked about enough. Yes, physically he's gifted. He can yep. do a lot of things with those tools. But there have been plenty of six foot four, two hundred and twenty pound quarterbacks with good arms. He had the physical tools, but the brain, the brain to yep. dominate defenses. And so, you know, when Jameis really was at his best, you couldn't keep him off a top five list at the very least. Yeah, I think in in my three. Jameis is in there. I don't know if it's one, two, or three, but he's doing calc two and game theory in, in this offense. And that's the right. thing. You know, I'm not saying that Joe Burrow couldn't, but Joe Burrow didn't have to. It's a different era where the reads are a little bit simpler. Not that they were completely simple because there's there's Sean Payton uh, elements in the offense that LSU ran that year. 
But Jameis had the most difficult playbook to run of all these guys. I'm confident in saying that. You had NFL coaches come to Tallahassee and say, that playbook's too big. <laughs> and Jameis was able to handle it. As a 19-year-old, what the hell is that? That is spooky. That is crazy stuff. So he's on the list. The exact opposite of the spectrum to me is on the list in Vince Young. That is a nightmare of a football player. Yeah, he's running around. With yeah. one page of a playbook. So yeah. you've got <laughs> 2,650 pages of a playbook, and you've got – 72 fun. Just go make a play, Vince. If, if it ain't there, go win. That's actually also very hard to do, and he was able to do that against the all-time USC Trojans in what is a de facto road game for them, the pinnacle of the sport. Remember, ESPN was doing specials at the time of, is USC the greatest team in the history of college right. football, only to say they're not even the best team this year because of Vince Young. So that's two. And then it's tough. It's either Joe Burrow or Cam Newton, and I don't know what to do. The coin's in the air, and I don't know who I'm picking. Probably Cam Newton because that dude is inevitable. He's like Judgment Day. It's crazy. Yeah, and remember, that season is an insane season when you factor in all the rushing yards. It's it's really – but can I do this once again to point out how quickly we forget people's career? This list was what, from 2000? 2000 to current, yes. Okay, well, man, if we're going to have this fun – now, I don't want to be here all day, but – are we just going to pretend that like Andrew Luck didn't play football for Stanford? I mean, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. How about we, Matt Leinart or Carson yeah, Plummer? <laughs> we could go on and on and on, right? I mean, this is silly. I'll sit here and make an argument for Andrew Luck all day. He had bums all around him. Chris Ricks, unbelievable. <laughs> so it's a fun exercise, but it, it 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 can be so aggravating. And see what happens is this certainly just adds fuel to the fire, the belief that. ESPN or anybody for that matter that makes these kinds of lists just hates Jameis Winston, just hates Florida State. It's hard to argue otherwise because you really do have to kind of contort yourself a lot of different directions to somehow keep Jameis Winston off this list. I mean, like a Romanian gypsy. Uh, until next time, make sure you like and subscribe so you get more on Jameis screw jobs by lists put out by ESPN and others. There you go. It'll happen.